Back in the early modern period, right before the scum of Africa became a huge thing, there were a few countries that tried out colonization in another continent before it got big. The United Kingdom, the Netherlands, France, Portugal, Spain, Denmark, and Latvia. Oh yeah, also, here, I have a map of about the 1610s. Turn of the 16th century, the territories of what we nowadays know as Latvia was split between two regional powers. In the south, you had the Duchy of Courland and Semigalia, which was a vassal of the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth. In not just across the Daugav River, in the north, you had Swedish Livonia, obviously controlled by Sweden. For this story, we'll focus on the vassal state of the Duchy of Courland and Semigalia. For the reasons why the chapter is named as such, let's take a little look at Courland's history. When the Duchy was founded, the first duke of the country, Gothard Kettler, was assigned to govern it. Some decades later, he died leaving two heirs for the dukedom. The first, Friedrich Kettler, controlled the eastern part of Semigalia, while the western part of Courland was controlled by Wilhelm Kettler. Later, Wilhelm, the duke that controlled the western part, married the daughter of the Duke of Prussia, and gained a small region in the western part of the dukedom called Liebau. The port was responsible for basically all metalworks and ship construction in the entire dukedom, Later, Wilhelm got removed from power, from conflicts with the nobles in the local area. Now, why was this important? Due to the fact that there's only now one duke, and that duke is getting quite old. And who will replace him? None other than the star of our video. When Jacob Kettler came into power, his effect on the dukedom was felt immediately. Unlike other dukes, Jacob was special in the fact that when he was younger, he would tour all of Western Europe, where he learned shipbuilding and became fond of merchantilist ideals. Those ideals and skills would come in very handy with trade. Also, he made powder mills and started producing gunpowder. Later, he also made a merchant fleet, and now this fleet is where the story gets interesting. The merchant fleet, we could say, was Jacob's pride. Remember the port from earlier? Liebau, yeah that one. It was one of the two merchant fleet main ports. The other port, Windau, went on and made 120 ships, 40 of which were warships. All of this allowed Jacob to become a subcontinent-wide sensation, making some irrelevant Polish duchy to a regional trade power, even being on good terms with Portugal, Netherlands, Britain and France. Later, this merchant fleet grew in size quite a lot that they made two colonies to be able to trade outside of Europe. The merchant fleet went on to form two colonies, the first St. Andrew's Island in the Gambia River and another Tobago Island which is in the Caribbean. The first of St. Andrew's Island is a small trading port. The fort on the island is called Fort Jacob, named after none other than Jacob Kettler. The main problem of the fort was the lack of water supply on the island. Thus, they were forced to rely on the goodwill of the King of Barra, just as the fort could stay operational. Later, Afero Jacob Kettler wanted a permanent settlement on the island, so he sent married couples to the island, as well as the pastor. This pastor lived in a small church out of cane with a thatched roof. Even later on, there were rumours of gold in the river, so Jacob Kettler wanted a full expedition. But again, another problem, a very small of Corlanders had any experience in Africa, so they should entirely rely on foreigners just to look around the river and some desert. So what about the other colony? It went even worse. The island of Tobago had been tried to be colonised from 1637 all the way till 1690, which Corland tried its attempt. It also failed horrendously. 33 attempts of colonising the island across six decades, and colonies from all over Europe. And why did they fail? Indigenous attacks. A long time after Jacob Kettler's death, in 1795, the final Duke of Courland, Peter von Mirren, who was ruled under heavy Russian influence, gave up his right to rule for some heavy compensation from the Russian Empire, thus marking the end of Courland and most of the post Russian Commonwealth. Thankfully, for the Duke resigned, he ceded all colonies to the United Kingdom, but not like he had much say in the matter either, as the United Kingdom had sold the settlements long ago, companies wanted to cash in on slaves and gold. All in all, these colonies were forgotten, as Latvia didn't have them for long, but the ones they did own, they made quite the impact on. It was good a lot of rights and wealth for the colonial population. It's not like the next 200-ish years who didn't do all of that or anything. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching. If you're new to YouTube, let me know you might see some large inspirations watching this, which is I'm getting rated for pronunciation and the quality of subtitles here. 
There will be another video somewhere on screen a week after I upload this, so I can explain the hell of a one-week deadline for a whole video essay project. So until then, cheers.